Some would argue that the powerful blockchain technology which underpins cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum is more valuable than the market caps of these crypto assets. This has certainly been the opinion of many governments and corporations around the world who've been actively adopting blockchain over the past decade as its advantages become ever more apparent. Many cryptocurrency projects have consequently decided to cater specifically to private and public institutions in the hope of securing some of their lucrative tech contracts. One cryptocurrency project that is hoping to crack this enterprise blockchain space is Hedera Hashgraph, which has taken a completely different approach to distributed ledger technologies. Over the past year, Hedera Hashgraph has made incredible strides in institutional adoption and has secured multiple head-turning institutional partnerships. This has many wondering whether Hedera Hashgraph is on track to become the leading enterprise-oriented project in the crypto space by the end of 2021. So today, I'll be examining this possibility and what effect it could have on the price of the HBAR token. Could HBAR become one of the top performing alts in this bull market? Stay tuned to find out. Now, I've heard that there have been rumors going around in the comments section that I am a financial advisor. The fact of the matter is that I am not a financial advisor and nothing in this video should be considered financial or investment advice. If you want to help me kill this rumor, please take a second to scroll down and comment, Guy is not a financial advisor. Let's see how many comments we can get down there and let's put a stop to this fake news. Now, if you're new to the channel, you're probably wondering what exactly is going on, so allow me to explain. I am Guy the Crypto Guy, and here at the Coin Bureau, I bring you the highest quality crypto news and crypto reviews that you'll find on the tube. Don't believe me? Well then, I guess you'll just have to subscribe to the channel and ping that notification bell and find out for yourself. Watching this video is a good start, and I've even left some timestamps on the video timeline right here, and you can use them to jump around to the topics that tease you the most. And speaking of teasing, that's quite enough foreplay for today. It's time to hash out Hedera Hashgraph. The story of Hedera Hashgraph begins with Swirls, a Texas software company founded by computer scientists and former airmen Mance Harmon and Dr. Lehman Baird in 2015. Baird is the mastermind behind Hashgraph, a novel consensus mechanism for distributed ledgers from which Hedera takes its surname. I'll elaborate on Hashgraph in a moment. The Hedera Consensus White Paper was released in May 2016 after months of testing, and Swirls went on to raise millions of dollars in funding in 2017 for what would eventually become Hedera Hashgraph. Now, although Hedera Hashgraph is a limited liability company registered in Delaware under the name Hashgraph Consortium LLC, Hedera is technically a governing body consisting of 16 corporations, including Google, IBM, LG, and Boeing. This conglomerate, called the Hedera Governing Council, includes Swirls, which holds the patent to the Hashgraph consensus mechanism and licensed it out to Hashgraph Consortium LLC when it was incorporated at the end of 2017. Hedera's council members run the core network nodes of Hedera Hashgraph and are the only ones able to vote on any changes or upgrades to the network. That said, Anyone can table a Hedera Improvement Proposal, or HIP, for Hedera's council members to review. I imagine that these are also reviewed by Lehman Baird, who serves as Hedera Hashgraph's chief scientist, and possibly even Mance Harmon, who currently holds the CEO seat. In case the patent stuff didn't make it obvious, Hedera's core technology is not open source. Instead, it is open review, which means that, quote, the code is available only for reviewing, compiling, and testing, but not for any other use. This is to protect against any possible forks of Hedera Hashgraph, as is repeatedly stated on Hedera's website, in their documentation, and in their blog posts. These concerns around forking are a bit strange when you consider how Hedera Hashgraph actually works. In contrast to cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum, Hedera Hashgraph does not use blockchain technology. Instead, it uses another distributed ledger technology called a DAG, which is short for Directed Acyclic Graph. 
Now, without getting too technical, a DAG allows all network nodes to freely share information with one another as they please and timestamps all these messages to keep them in order. This sending of messages between nodes is called gossiping, and gossiping is the basis of the Hashgraph consensus algorithm, which uses something called Asynchronous Byzantine Fault Tolerant, or ABFT. This fancy acronym refers to the fact that there is no specific time when all the nodes need to reach consensus on a set of transactions. In other words, ABFT is a proof-of-stake consensus mechanism where there is no block time, and that's because there is no blockchain. In the Hashgraph consensus, nodes gossip messages to each other about transactions at random. Like gossiping in real life, this information travels fast and makes it possible for all the nodes on the Hedera Hashgraph network to achieve consensus about a transaction in roughly three to five seconds. I've obviously watered down Hedera's consensus quite a bit, and you can learn more about it by watching Hedera's own video on their consensus mechanism, which I'll leave a link to in the description. Now, with this unique architecture, Hedera Hashgraph is reportedly able to process around 10,000 transactions per second. I should also probably mention that Hedera is smart contract compatible, and even though its base code is closed source, anyone can create a smart contract on the Hedera Hashgraph network. There is just one small problem, and that's that Hedera's claims about the efficiency of its network do not appear to be entirely accurate. Two weeks before Hedera Hashgraph opened its doors to the public in mid-September 2019, Chief Investment Officer at Arcane Assets, Eric Wall, published a lengthy Medium post about Hedera Hashgraph, and it was the sort of smackdown you normally see on pay-per-view TV. The ultra TLDR is that Hedera Hashgraph's claims about 10,000 transactions per second are limited to wallet-to-wallet -wallet transactions on the network. This was, and still is, noted in the first disclaimer under Hedera's efficiency infographic on the homepage of their website. According to Hedera's own documentation, the TPS for all other transactions is 10. That's it, 10 TPS. To be fair, the screenshot of this documentation in Wall's Medium post is over a year old, and though I haven't been able to find the updated TPS for other transactions, I reckon it's gone up since then. However, Wall also notes in his Medium post that a 10K TPS is impossible for smart contracts on Hedera Hashgraph because Hedera leverages the Ethereum virtual machine, and the EVM itself can only take in a maximum of 300 transactions per second due to how it interacts with computer hardware. In response to Wall's Medium post, Hedera Hashgraph's technical lead, Paul Madsen, fired back with his own article titled, quote, Counterfud. The TLDR on that one is basically, no, you're wrong. <laughs> now, I would take more time to unpack Madsen's reply, were it not for the fact that Wall struck back with another Medium article titled, quote, Counter Counter Fud, where he eats through just about every counterargument Madsen served up. In all seriousness, though, if you have the time, I do recommend reading through all three articles and making your own decision as to who is right. I'll leave links to those in the description if you're up for it. If you're already convinced that Hedera has been stretching the truth with its TPS claims, you might be wondering if there's some solace to be found in the tokenomics of Hedera Hashgraph's native cryptocurrency, HBAR. There really isn't. Allow me to explain. HBAR has a maximum supply of 50 billion, and I'll just pretend I didn't see the documentation that suggests Swirls could increase that limit whenever it feels like it. Hedera Hashgraph sold 17% of HBAR's total supply in a series of simple agreement for future token sales to accredited investors around the world. Now, in case you didn't know, accredited investor is code for rich people. There were apparently three SAFT sales which took place in 2018, which saw the HBAR token sold for anywhere between one tenth of a cent to 12 cents apiece. So, congrats to the early investors on that one. Although there are not many details about the earlier SAFT sales, the final round of SAFT sales is detailed in a Hedera blog post from August 2018. The blog post reveals that no more than about 800 investors participated in the final round of SAFT sales. Now, while I was not able to find any information about how many investors participated in the earlier HBAR SAFT sales, 
I suspect there were not very many. This is because Hedera Hashgraph revealed in December 2019 that the poor price action of the HBAR token was due to SAFT investors constantly dumping their HBAR tokens on the market. Hedera's solution to this was to give even more HBAR tokens to SAFT investors who agreed to delay receiving the tokens they'd been allocated. An update about this, quote, SAFT exchange offer from October 2020 seems to note that over 1.4 billion bonus HBAR tokens would be distributed to SAFT investors in Q4 of 2020. This suggests two very troubling things. Firstly, it suggests that a substantial portion of SAFT investors took Hedera Hashgraph up on the offer, meaning that they did not see any value in the project. Secondly, this offer also works out to a release of nearly 3% of HBAR's total supply in just a few months. To make things worse, that same blog post notes that Hedera's governing council had voted unanimously that the tokens allocated to Hedera's founders should not be subject to a lockup because, quote, the board ultimately determined that a formal lockup would not provide any benefit that could not be equally achieved through public notice and ongoing transparency. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. Hedera Hashgraph's economic incentives are quite frankly some of the worst I've ever seen. Hedera Hashgraph knows this too. They actually hired an economic consulting firm in 2019 to improve their network incentives. Here are a few pain points I'm sure that consulting firm has already identified. Even though Hedera Hashgraph is a proof-of-stake cryptocurrency, it does not have any slashing. For those unfamiliar, slashing is when a validator node loses some of its staked crypto because it engaged in malicious behavior, such as attempting to manipulate transactions. Now, in Hedera's defense, I also wouldn't want to deal with Google or IBM if their HBAR stakes ever got slashed. After all, these tech giants can be naughty from time to time. Hedera's actual defense against this criticism is that, quote, the Hashgraph protocol gives nodes less opportunity for breaking the rules of the protocol than in blockchains, and so there is less need to punish them for such rule breaking. Too bad we can't see what's really going on in Hashgraph's protocol since it's closed source. This inability to verify what's really going on with the network's validator nodes is another issue with Hedera Hashgraph that Eric Wall pointed out in that Medium post I mentioned earlier. On that note, you might be wondering what the economic incentives are for participating as a validator on Hedera Hashgraph's network. There's no blockchain, which means there are no blocks, and that means there are no block rewards to be earned from staking HBAR. Thankfully, Hedera has one last line of economic defense, network fees. These fees are paid in HBAR and, as far as I understand, the validator nodes receive 90% of these fees while Swirls gets 10% as licensing royalties. Hedera Hashgraph CEO Mance Harmon noted in a recent interview that this HBAR is then sold on the open market using cryptocurrency exchanges. Not a good deal for any HBAR token holders, to say the least. Harmon also seems to suggest in that same interview that the main motive for being a part of the Hedera Council is the ability to profit from being a middleman that can charge a commission on Hedera services. In any case, this constant selling of HBAR fees also happens to be a threat to the security of Hedera Hashgraph's network itself. That's because according to Hedera Hashgraph's own documentation, if someone was to own and stake one third of HBAR's total supply, they would be able to corrupt the network. The constant deflationary pressure from SAFT investors dumping their HBAR and the Hedera Council validators is a disaster waiting to happen in this regard. Never mind the millions of HBAR being dished out to incentivize developers to build on Hedera Hashgraph, something which has also been a huge struggle for the project. This is, ironically, a good thing, because if someone were to build a valuable dApp on Hedera, the amount of HBAR being sold on exchanges by the Hedera Council would only stand to increase as a result. If there's any hope to be found for Hedera, it's in the remarkable progress it made in 2020. In February, Google signed on as a Hedera Council member. In May, University College London and LG Electronics did the same. In June, Zane Group, one of the largest telecom companies in the Middle East and North Africa, also jumped on board. By July, Coinbase was playing with the idea of listing the HBAR token. In September, Hedera Hashgraph threw its hat into the supply chain ring 
by partnering with Entrust, an Australian food and wine tracing platform. In November, Hedera Hashgraph partnered with the world-renowned Mayo Clinic to build an app that tracks COVID-19. And just recently, Hedera Hashgraph partnered with the National Health Service here in the UK to make sure that the Pfizer vaccines are stored at the appropriate temperatures when they're transported. I may be wrong, but I am quite certain that these partnerships are all thanks to Hedera's consensus service, which went live in February 2020. Hedera's consensus service is a, quote, scalable, cost-effective way to record events to a public ledger with guaranteed order. This consensus service is also compatible with other permissioned enterprise ledgers like Hyperledger Fabric, Corda, and Quorum, which are preferred by governments and corporations. This ability to plug in various permissioned blockchains went live at the end of April 2020, just before the heavy-hitting partnerships started to surface. If you take a second to unpack each of the partnerships I just mentioned, you'll notice that they fit the profile of a company using Hedera's consensus service. While Hedera's consensus service might be its golden ticket, there are others who think that it is nothing more than vaporware. I am, of course, referring once again to Eric Wall, who argues that the consensus service is nothing more than a set of centralized databases using a flashy consensus mechanism to justify a marked up price. This would actually be in line with Hedera's middleman profit model described by CEO Mance Harmon. But even if Wall is right, it doesn't change the fact that institutional investors are buying the narrative. If Hedera starts to see some serious network activity, this could increase the network fees to a level that would finally make it viable for people to begin proxy staking on Hedera's validator nodes. The consequences of that would be some much-needed participation from the cryptocurrency community. As the French say, fake it till you make it. And there you have it, folks. Hedera Hashgraph in all its glory, or lack thereof, depending on who you ask. If you ask me, I am not a very big fan of the project, and that's for many reasons. Firstly, I'm not too keen on the fact that the network is closed source and controlled by the same sorts of mega corporations that cryptocurrency seeks to dethrone. To be blunt, I think that the concerns around a forking of the protocol are BS. I suspect that the real reason why they're keeping that code under lock and key is because they know a talented cryptocurrency dev could make a more efficient version of Hedera in a heartbeat. This brings me to my second gripe with Hedera, efficiency. Hedera's claims about their transactions per second do not seem to stand up to scrutiny, and I find it distasteful that the team seems to have danced around that criticism instead of accepting it and improving their network. Believe it or not, I only just scratched the surface of all the concerning stuff I found when it comes to Hedera and the HBAR token. I didn't review the fact that the Hedera Council is able to remove any smart contracts it wants from Hedera's network, or the incredibly low supply of HBAR that's currently in circulation. What's more is when I went poking around Hedera's various block explorers, I saw billions of tokens being moved from wallets belonging to Hedera and its team members. These wallets are surprisingly easy to spot, too, because Hedera's wallets are ordered numerically, i.e. wallet 1, 2, 3, and so on. Now, I'm no expert in blockchain forensics, and I can't say for certain where those tokens were going. But the fact that there do not seem to be any programmed vesting or lockup schedules for Hedera or any of its team members is seriously concerning for me. I reckon that if you want to succeed as a cryptocurrency project, you need to have the wind of the crypto community in your sails. Hedera seems to have next to no community whatsoever. Case in point, Hedera's most read medium post of 2020 had 58 claps, even with the amazing milestones the project met during that year. That's just sad. I also think Hedera has a lot of work to do in the realm of transparency. And before you say it, Yes, I know that Hedera publishes minutes of its council's quarterly meetings. In my opinion, these do not do much to offset the discrepancies in Hedera's documentation that feel intentional, nor the unnecessary length of the unnecessary amount of blog posts they keep pumping out. That said, Hedera is not a lost cause by any stretch of the imagination. It has more than enough financial firepower and corporate gravitas to change its course. 
I think that's what we're finally beginning to see now. If you found this video informative, give that YouTube algorithm a hint by smashing that like button. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already and ping that notification bell so you're always in the know with the Coin Bureau. If you just can't wait until the next video, and I don't blame you, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram to see my crypto meme stash and peek behind the scenes here at the studio. You can also join my Telegram channel where I share daily insights about the crypto market. And if you're the type to go big or go home, then you just have to subscribe to my weekly newsletter. It's filled to the brim with everything crypto. You'll get news, reviews, trading tips, and even a breakdown of my personal cryptocurrency portfolio. If the crypto market has been good to you during this bull run, well, consider using some of those profits to support the channel by buying some of this sick swag on the Coin Bureau merch store. Check the links in the description to fill up on these crypto goodies. And that's all for today, my friends. Thank you for watching, and I will see you again pronto. Thank <laughs> you.